You know us, you love us, the Bouncy Boys are back, and we are here to talk about this week's big announcement, Luminous, and this week's big announcement, Iger's Departure. That's this week on the Droids. Welcome back to the Droids You're Looking For, a Star Wars podcast. Alongside Chris, I am Sam, and it's another two-hander. Yeah. You it's can't like, see one hand doesn't see what the other hand is doing. Well, that's just the, <laughs> that's just the state of the pod in general. We <laughs> seem to never know what's going on. But We're I'll tell you. a four-handed you, monster. I just want to take a moment to acknowledge to all of our fans out there that we know that this is hard. We know that only having two of us is not as rewarding and that what you really want is you want to see the whole gang together. You want to see those, that dynamic bouncing off see, each other. You want to see the Gorsum foursome. You want to see the Gorsum foursome. Uh, you know, just like just like the, the beautiful Gorsum foursome that we got in The Rise of Skywalker. You know, Ray, <laughs> Finn, Poe, and... Um, bb uh, Cla- Claude. Claude. Um, <laughs> oh, nice. You know, Claude you know I like from Claude. the poster. <laughs> you know who I didn't... You know who we don't talk about? A night Claude from the poster. You know who we don't talk about enough? Is the... <laughs> The the alien in Lando's ship when they get in it he goes okay <laughs> yeah that look, guy rules <laughs> that guy rules that guy look there's this is what's so I mean this is among this is one of many things that is so annoying about this movie it's not yeah. like it's not like everybody fell asleep at the wheel you know right. there's some amazing puppeteering like, there's I, it's, it's got the hallmarks of great Star Wars design but. I hope in upcoming Star Wars projects that we see that guy a little more and how he became a driver and maybe his <laughs> his family and well how I mean we don't really know you know I don't know what's what species he was we don't know how how old how he, old this guy do you know was. he you know I liked him because he reminded me of the like the shrimp creature in the Muppets how his like, <laughs> like his mouth sure. just kind of moved sure. So, but uh, you know, we we I, I think you bring up a really good point that there's obviously there's a lot of um, depth to be mined for uh, you know prequel territory for uh, for this guy, it, and we don't know his age. I mean, he could be he could be two hundred years old, <laughs> which would put him oh. as someone around during the High Republic. The High Republic. Ooh. Exactly. That's the big <laughs> announcement this there week. There it is. Um, the big thing we learned this week is uh, we found out what Project Luminous that's been lumin over us, Nessen. Lu- luminous, luminescent over us, luminescent. Uh, boy, okay, Mike, come back. <laughs> Let's take a moment and say, Mike, <laughs> these transitions, yeah. man, we're, we're doing our best. Yeah. I hope you're listening. I hope you're beaming. I hope you're smiling. Yeah. I hope you're happy with yourself because this is what you get. This is the state of the pod. This is what happens um, when you get a Bouncy Boys cast. You go up, is, you go down. <laughs> and you just stay down. And you just stay down. <laughs> Somehow you bounce lower than you went up. <laughs> Defies gravity. Uh, it's like that... Uh, it's like that Saya video. Oh no, that's not. That's, wait, I'm complete. Oh <laughs> man, of, I butchered. I was thinking of the turn down for what music video oh. where people just keep crashing through the floor. Oh, but yeah, then I was yeah. thinking of that <laughs> the, building reminds me of like the building that the Saya. Oh yeah, where she's dancing. video with yeah. the little girl dancing. Yeah, uh, great video. Look, guys, get on your. <laughs> uh, honestly, everybody, hop on. You're on your phone. Pause the podcast. Go yeah. watch a music video from four years ago. And <laughs> come back. There you go. Got any plugs? Other oh. plugs, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> uh not that i could talk about um so we got the announcement for project luminous this week we found out that what it is is it's this this assemblage of writers uh and creators largely from um well it, it's a publishing it's a cross-platform publishing event from star wars it's the next sort of step in the Star Wars story, now that we have completed the Star Wars, uh, you know, the Skywalker saga. Um, and so the project has been this. We knew some of the people involved. We knew that they were writers uh, who have come from the, you know, the world of comic books and uh, and, and like novels and things. Um, some of that extended universe 
uh, I guess, the Disney era extended universe world. Um, and it's going to take place during a period 200 years prior to what we've ever seen in any of the Skywalker saga films during an era called the High Republic, which was largely a time of peace and prosperity in a galaxy far, far away. Right. Um, they unveiled this, uh, Chris. I assume you watched this uh, this video, uh, yeah. sort of a four minute announcement video. What 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 do you think? What were your big takeaways? Yeah, no, you know, I'm I'm pretty excited. I I think I we're kind of reaching for any kind of new Star Wars knowledge. I mean, I think it's a cool idea. I liked it. I I do like the kind of the team they assembled. It was cool. I think we saw uh, uh, Pablo Hidalgo. He was in the uh, mm-hmm. uh, in the video, and so it's like cool to see some of the, the that team being put to good use with this new phase of world building. I mean, I think it's something Star Wars could have used, honestly, a little bit more of between uh, uh, Jedi and, and The Force Awakens. I think maybe we rushed the gun a little bit. And uh, is, that, is, that, is that a phrase? <laughs> yeah, it's a common phrase. <laughs> yeah, rush you the know, gun. You know, putting putting the cart before the rushed gun, <laughs> as they we, say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> rush they rush the uh the cart um they used an amazon express cart um but i i like it i think it's cool it's is it something that gets me super stoked about star wars material not necessarily because i know there's gonna be a lot of content here and it's gonna feel overwhelming to try and read it all that was Maybe the most backhanded compliment you've ever given. <laughs> Am I excited? No, because there's too much to get excited about. Yeah. Um, no, look, I, I, I don't think anything you're saying is wrong. I, I will say, I think of the four of us, because we obviously have a text chain running. There's only, you're not going crazy, listener. There's only two of us here. But, mm-hmm. uh, the, you know, the other two, Ryan and Mike, are, are here in Force Ghost Spirit. Yeah. Uh, or you know, Force Ghost Memory. Or force or force ghost memory, uh, Harrison Ford. If you're listening, we know you don't know what we're uh, what we're talking about right now, but you know what? I don't care. JJ said we should do this. <laughs> yeah, man, should be enough uh, for him. But uh, I think I was of the four of us, kind of the least excited, the least uh, amped up for what Project Luminous was going to be. I've never <laughs> been a big. Um, person for the like publishing or extended universe stuff even though i did read those three books that we all agreed to read (laughs) together great they were Um, great and they were great um but i i so i think maybe just because i had slightly lower expectations i was more excited by what i saw i think the the sort of period they're exploring looks really cool they described um so it's this era of of peace and prosperity in the galaxy uh, the Jedi Knights are the Order of Jedi Knights sort of function as kind of like a King Arthur's Knights of the Round Table. They're they're protectors um, of the you know the known reaches of the galaxy, and and they they describe them both as Knights of the Round Table and as Texas Rangers, uh, <laughs> which I <laughs> thought was kind of fun. Yeah, covering a few bases there. Um, yeah, but 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 you know I think we know what they mean by that. It it gets back to a little bit of what you sort of see in in some of the prequels and and the clone wars tv series of mm-hmm. this idea that the 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 jedi knights are are protectors of order in the galaxy um you know i agree that it was great to see they they really seem to you know pride themselves on having assembled you know a diverse group of writers mm-hmm. it looks like they've got you know men women people from you know different cultural backgrounds you know racial and ethnic backgrounds so i would anticipate seeing a much more inclusive and representative, um, you know, group of, of Jedi and heroes that kind of any one of us who loves Star Wars out there can can find sort of our character, find somebody that we see ourselves in, which is exciting. Um, and then the, the, the threat, and they said the way they kind of broke the story was, what would the Jedi be afraid of? was the big driving question and they came up with the the sort of villains of the piece are going to be called the niles um which is a uh, fairly uh clear uh reference to nihilism and and that they're a nihilistic uh <laughs> yeah, guess, race of yeah. sort of outer outer rim folk um <laughs> we don't know what they're after we know that they they are you know, after nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what does the bear think of 
the the bear t- talkers um what's <laughs> what's that movie grizzly man grizzly um, the bear talkers <laughs> the bear talkers you know oh, um so we kind of we we have a shape forming uh they're keeping it pretty loose they're keeping it pretty open for all sorts of storytelling um we we saw some designs which i think was probably the most exciting part to me we get some visuals yeah. we see um they they make a point in the video to call out ian mckay who designed darth maul but they like do that over a shot of them showing Doug Chang, which is like yeah. the one that's exciting to me. Is like this is the guy who designed like the look of everything since yeah. nineteen ninety nine or yeah, well right? probably ninety seven pre production. But like yeah, they don't really call him out either, do they? Is they there... don't say his name. I yeah. I rewatched it right before we started this record, and they don't name him. And it's like yeah, I was super excited when I saw him in the video. I was like, oh, awesome! We'll finally get some of that like class and like excellence that the the prequels had in in as far as like Coruscant went and kind of that shiny polish which I really I really liked I I think that you know for wherever you fall on the on the prequels obviously in Star Wars fandom they they historically were contentious um although that almost seems like a laugh these days um but you know no matter where you fall I think you've got to look at like the work Doug Chang did and kind of sort of stand in awe of it i mean he really Mm -hmm. he took the visual language that obviously like ralph mccrory is the is the original the 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 guy to whom we owe so much of of what star wars became and then doug chang like i think really picked up that ball and ran with it in a in a beautiful way i agree chris the the shininess the whole idea of um you know the way they sort of paired the uh the prequels and the original trilogy with mm-hmm. decades, you know, you had yeah. the, the 1970s and the 1950s kind of represent. Right. And, um, you know, this is, it's also, this is kind of like a, a safe space for creatives in star Wars because it is so early on in the, in the Skywalker saga. Uh, that, this is not part of the Skywalker. It's saga. not that part of yeah, right, that, right. that concluded with uh, the rise of Skywalker. <laughs> oh, yes, correct, nine. correct. Except yeah, it's still the keystone reference. Um, I think that, by doing that, it gives them this kind of like realm where they're allowed to make wild claims or do, they don't have this like responsibility to make connective tissue as much anymore. And I think it's been a while since we've seen that in uh, Star it, Wars. It, I, I agree completely. And I think, yeah, I couldn't have said it better. I, I definitely think it's, it's freeing. Um, there is a part of me completely admittedly, I, there is a part of me that would have loved to have seen them, seen them go forward. Tell mm-hmm. something later. Yeah. Push the story forward because I I do think it it can be a bit of a crutch to always be looking to the past, go to the time before because you you've really set yourself. There's a yeah. there's a safety net there of well we know where we've got to end. Sure. But um but yeah. having said that, I do think you know going back 200 years, um I think I'll, I'll share something. You know Ryan said that you know he said oh i wish it was farther i wish it was like a thousand years oh, or something right. and i i kind of agree with that too that it's like man really if you're gonna well, this, do it go for it this you know? to me feels a little bit like they're kind of canonizing the old republic which i don't believe uh, is yes. in canon lore so i think this is going to be kind of their maybe more uh young adult friendly version of the old republic i think we probably won't ever get that far down maybe like a decade out from here they'll have to like visit some new like get a different kind of audience but i think that this is going to be for all intents and purposes the version of the old republic we're going to get in this disney era of star wars uh yes i think i think that may be that may be true i mean something else you said a few minutes ago that i I just was reminded of um was that you know they they also in the video they they outright describe this as an incubator for stories mm-hmm. which i think was really an interesting thing it almost felt like that video could have been talking to uh to shareholders in some way which <laughs> sure. we'll get to them in a minute um <laughs> uh but but the idea that you know you know marvel comics has existed for you know whatever 80 years now um longer maybe and they uh you know, I think they would say, they would describe like, well, the comics are still the flagship of these superheroes. That's their medium. You know, the movies are ancillary, but mm-hmm. but that's really not true these days. You know, these yeah. days, the movies kind of drive everything, and the comic books serve as a font of comparatively inexpensive, mm-hmm. you know, storytelling that then someone like Kevin Feige, along with the team at Disney and his producing partners and everybody can go yeah. through and really you know dig into and pull the the best 
you learn know, how to pull a movie out of that. The best nuggets for movies. Yeah. And they don't really they don't really name it that. They don't call it like it is, right? Because yeah. they need to protect the sort of sanctity of the comics yeah. for the comic fans. But in the Star Wars case, which came as movies first, they're like no, this is an incubator. We're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah, exactly. Stories, yeah, they're, so. they're kind of outright saying, "Hey, we're going to try a lot of different things here. Uh, hopefully, some of these stick." No, I think it is a good move, especially with Feige coming on board. Like, I think this would be his wheelhouse. Like, he's going to be able to start to see trends and direction in the in this High Republic era that he can pull out and start helping develop really cool stories with. Like, well, it, and you can see, you can see already, you know. From the from the artwork they've released, you see who they want to cast. You've got your Tom Hardy Jedi, Jedi. <laughs> You've got your John Bernthal Jedi. You've got your uh, what's the woman who plays the current Doctor on Doctor Who? Oh right, yeah, she's one of those Jedi. Yeah. It looks like, like, yep. <laughs> you know, they're they're definitely playing in like is with, it, with is some it familiar. Jodie Whittaker is that her name? Yeah, uh, yeah. Whittaker's the last name. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I yeah. think you're right. Um, yeah, no, I I, I agree. I think this will be. It will be interesting. I think they're, they're also. I just read they're going to do something new with a, a Wookiee. We're going to have a force wielding Wookiee for the first time. Say that three times fast. Yeah, force wielding <laughs> Wookiee. Force wielding Wookiee. Um, one thing that does bother me about all of the concept art is that a lot of the lightsabers have um, hilts on them on the handles. <laughs> uh, yeah, like they have the the hand guard. Or yeah, the hand that, uh, the yeah. hand guard rather. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's an interesting thing. What Previously, it, we'd only ever seen Kylo Ren with the crossbar. Yeah, because bar, cross usually guard, you could just slice the slice that right off. But maybe it is made of some kind of Mandalorian type armor or dark Beskar. saber type material where uh, Beskar is involved, and maybe you can't cut it with a lightsaber. It's saber. possible. It's possible, or it also seems like. It you know, see, they're, yeah. they're, it seems like they're maybe retroactively um, <laughs> sort of creating a reason that Kylo Ren is, oh, you sure. know, modeling his lightsaber yeah. after yeah, the originals. Well, perhaps <laughs> underneath it is saber. We don't know what's inside of that piece of metal. So maybe underneath it is saber. I That's couldn't have said it better <laughs> myself, Chris. <laughs> nah, maybe underneath is saber. Um, but I think that it it's going to be interesting. I I'm a little I'm a little nervous that it might it seems like the the build up for it was like there but then I I I just hope it doesn't go by the kind of the wayside. Honestly, this is where this is where I think my like all the build up as soon as like it's it's just it it sort of sounded to me this whole build up around like Project Luminous. It sounded to me like I was like this is going to be a publishing event. And yeah. I don't care about those. Yeah. And so when I came in with like kind of lower expectations it made me be like oh wow this looks really cool and so i have the kind of i'm i'm on the upswing i'm kind of hot on it right now i'm like this looks cool the jedi designs look dope um you know there's it i i love that it's new i love that there's going to be comics and there's Mm -hmm. just going to be no chance to tie them to to luke and anakin and (laughs) leia and all these people yeah the one one uh, the kind of quote they've pulled out was Star Wars The High Republic features the Jedi as we've always wanted to see them as true guardians of peace and justice. I, I don't know. Is that something we've always wanted to see? No, I always wanted to see him as Liam Neeson and I got it in 1999, <laughs> yeah, well, you go. baby. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that to me seems maybe it is catering to an audience that's like, oh, Jedi should just be like fighting and doing cool stuff um altruistically rather than that kind of introspection that we got from the the later trilogy so it definitely i definitely think we're not going to see a lot of temptation of the dark side yeah at least early on we might get there maybe some of the niles will will introduce that or maybe we'll see i mean hey if if this is it you know there's an interesting idea where i mean this could potentially in the in their current canon exist kind of pre Sith. Mm-hmm. And if that's the case, that's, do we see the formation of yeah. the dark side? Maybe we get the, some Mortis. Yeah, maybe we get some uh so way back stories. I think uh it would be cool to see like Yoda coming of age and things like that. I'm sure those are probably <sighs> some of the big dogs in in this realm. No people have I. <laughs> um, um Alonda um, I, my, I don't know. My only question, though, is so if the bad guys are called the Niles, then the good guys must be called the Dr. Fraser Cranes. 
<laughs> uh, that's yeah. Bonus points for that. That's great. Um, and I would end the pod there, except we we neglected oh. to talk about one one more thing, which yes. is that this obviously this this project is going to be you know overseen by the the great and wise uh bob chapek who <laughs> from one bob to another bob <laughs> from one, from one bob to another um the the story of disney um <laughs> from mike to bob to bob um <laughs> we're uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, we, we had a, we had a CEO turnover effective immediately. Uh, Bob Iger stepped down this, this week as of this record, he stepped down effective immediately, elevating Bob Chapek to the role of CEO. Now Iger is going to be staying on as chairman of the board through 2021. But, um, I mean, the timing of this is all very interesting, right? Yeah. It was clearly 20, 2019 was like the, the big year for Disney on film, um, they kind of ended all the big stuff or brought to logical conclusions for the time beings all of their big live action films and you know had some huge animated sequels they 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 really did it you know Iger obviously released his his book kind of his memoirs mm-hmm. um they announced project luminous and then he steps down chapek takes over and then they announced that spielberg's leaving <laughs> from <laughs> yeah. indiana jones kind of a, yeah i mean <laughs> they definitely may have sold this guy no i was kidding. it's an old bait and switch um no i i think how can you how could someone like Iger kind of top top himself i know mike will probably have a lot to say on this. I know he he's followed his career kind of closely. So, but I, just kind of on the surface level reactions, like he did give Disney and perhaps like just Hollywood, maybe one of the biggest years that it will ever have in the foreseeable future. So I think leaving on this high note, it makes a lot of sense. Um, but you're right. This could have a, wi- uh, a, a ripple effect. Um, you know, I don't it, know if, if the Spielberg, thing is necessarily related but it could be a a kind of a changing of the guard happening across the board yeah i don't know that it's i i'm not i'm not certainly willing to to say that it's related either i i think that i think what what we can say is related is the timing of all this right these announcements came you know and are carefully being managed and timed out by disney pr so there's a reason they want us seeing you know things in the sequence that they want us seeing them, um, and we can read into that what we want. Um, I definitely agree. I think you know Mike is kind of the expert on. He, he's a little bit of an Iger expert. Um, mm-hmm. You know my immediate reaction. I'm it. It's so wild that I'm so frosty towards the rise of Skywalker that it was like I kind of just had a knee jerk like good riddance, and that's because there was all <laughs> this speculation of what sure. you know what hand Iger had in the creation of that film and the scheduling of that film. Um, and I'm just angry about it. But but I actually think the the bigger point is that when you look at the acquisitions this guy has made, um, you know, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, Lucasfilm, you know, it's like it, it, he, he really, from a business standpoint, is something kind of to, to marvel at. Uh, to, that was marvel twice that's too much um (laughs) something to to marvel be amazed by yeah um and and so i'm really interested for mike's take on all this um it's certainly you know i i think what we're talking around was something you said just as we were getting started chris that you know if if spielberg is walking away and going to be in a producerial kind of overseeing oversight role um, currently, speculation is that, that James Mangold might be the director on Indiana Jones 5. Mm-hmm. But if he's stepping back, you know, obviously after the sale, Lucas, who, you know, had all these ideas for the, the sequel trilogy, you know, he stepped back. You know, I, I'm i sensing some anxiety around Kathleen Kennedy. You know, this yeah, is all not, moving very, very fast. Not, not to pile on the existing rumor mill there, but I mean, it, it, it does seem like it would be a good stop measure here to kind of change over hands and maybe and and as an amazing a job as she does and i mean she's probably the greatest if not one of the greatest uh, producers of all time in like the history of films like maybe it would be good though if star wars is starting this new chapter to just 
give it a true kind of fresh fresh start. Yeah, I um look, they have what I need to remember is that they have over the last two decades really um you know, Disney has given me uh, has produced some of the movies I've loved most. Um it's been a little rocky recently. I'm on a bit of a, a low note. Um, oh right, the other thing he also la- he also launched Disney Plus. So like, so, the oh, yeah, they, thing. so <laughs> yeah. I mean, the guy's really you know really nailed Very it. Prolific, he, opens, yeah. he opened Star Wars Land. He opened Avatar <laughs> Land. Um, yeah, you know everything. But um, you know we're in for a, a, a new era, and we'll have to see what. Um, <laughs> I'm also just remembering now, like, do you think that, like, some of the senior, some of, like, the senior leadership at Disney, like, had to go in and have their annual review with the Bobs, like, from (laughs) Office Space? Yeah, the two Bobs. (laughs) Are you familiar Um, with Michael Bolton? (laughs) Uh, Michael Bolton? He loves the whole catalog. Eisner? (laughs) Um, Yeah, um, no, I I would hate to see her leave, though. So I, I, I think... This could just be, I mean, this is probably more business than film business, but it, it's just a changing of the guard. And, and you know what? With a new head honcho, maybe uh, maybe we'll see um, maybe we'll see some positive change in Star Wars. I mean, I think the one thing we can be sure of, and I think this is a good thing, is that I think, I think Kevin Feige's job is safe. And I think that the Marvel films have been really kind of an incredible achievement over the last, you know, 10 years. Um, And he's dipping his toe into the world of Star Wars. So I'm excited to see, you know, what we get out of that. It sounds like we are going to get a new Indiana Jones movie with Harrison Ford, which is exciting. Um, You know, probably something of a sequel to Call of the Wild. What do you think they're thinking about releasing Call of the Wild in theaters like now right after they released togo on disney plus which i heard was actually really good i heard yeah. togo was pretty good i think it's funny i mean we we talked a little bit about that and and harrison ford petting that man uh <laughs> <laughs> right last, but last i think week. togo has like real dogs right yeah, togo probably has i think it does have real dogs yeah i think is is this disney's like netflix style competition against cinemas like they have a, a fast track to knowing probably what's going to be released given their network so i i feel but like, like they're both disney is is wait is call yeah, the wild disney they're Did both disney <laughs> are you looking this up to check I'm me look at, i'm looking it up is it no it's 20th century <laughs> oh but it's 20th century fox so yeah it would be that's what had me confused i forgot about that interesting wait which one which one was 20th century fox call of the wild or call of the wild or yeah okay but it is okay but it so is, they had these but, they had these two they had these two dog movies in production so yeah i was gonna say when they bought when they bought uh, uh fox or i should uh, 20th century studios i should say is it as it is called now um Ugh. but um Ugh. <laughs> so they probably had this movie lined up and were like hey just so you know we got harrison to do this movie as well <laughs> yeah well look hey i'm glad the guy i'm glad the guy's finally getting some work finally making some money yeah um i'm in for it maybe i'll see it this weekend yeah i'm hey sounds great sign me <laughs> up um chris any other thoughts look I, I feel like we we covered this is the big news i mean the other thing that happened this week uh you know first episode of clone wars is out i have mm-hmm. not watched it yet i'm still Same. working on my catch up because yeah. we knew we weren't going to talk about it this episode so yeah. uh you know if you're if you're uh you know tweeting at us at droids pod or, or or commenting on any instagrams at droids pod or you know facebook or itunes or anything you know don't don't spoil don't spoil where they're going yet um we and know I'm- where it all ends I'm also working on my ketchup, but that's a homemade ketchup <laughs> that I'm producing in my house. So I, I kept uh, I I just kept talking because I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but I'll get the, I'll get that recipe honed in so Sam we can enjoy that with some French fries. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll double dog it this weekend and uh, watch back to back Togo <laughs> and go see the Call of the Wild. Sounds good, man. Yeah. Um, hey. Yeah, I got look. I got nothing else to say on this. Uh, I think Luminous <laughs> looks cool. I think 
Bob Ch- Chopek. Ch- how do we say the guy's name? I don't even know. Look, good know. luck to you, sir. <laughs> we'll good luck to you. Yeah. B- big Bob C. Big Bobby C. Um, <laughs> from Bob to Bob. We should. That should be the Mike's side podcast, From Bob to Bob. <laughs> from Bob to Bob with Just Mike and trip. Mike, and we yeah. bring Michael Eisner in yeah, to, exactly. to co-host it with him. Mike and Mike talk about Bob and Bob. Yeah, I um, like it. No, I think I, Mike's, it's ex- on, Mike's on Bob's. It's exciting to see what's going to happen next with Star Wars and all these kind of changes always bring up new opportunities. So, um, as always, there's hope in the galaxy. Uh, I can't wait, wait to start digging into some of these books. Um, and, and also, I want to see how they kind of tie into the, the line of comics that Marvel's already producing to see if there's going to be any like expansion of that team to uh, Marvel and, and further on. I'm curious. I mean, I think yeah, it I think it's a lot of the same team. I I I'm guessing that they're kind of winding down the existing publications. I'm guessing yeah. that they're winding down the the Skywalker Star Wars stuff and the next movement is going to be all High Republic. Yeah. Well, there you go. Um, then and then Feige's like all after do that for like 5 6 years, then call in Kevin and he'll just pick out four movies. Call in Kevin. There it is. It's- Bob and, and Ryan, Bob. you don't Bob get to, you don't get to be on it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, well, there you well, go. That's a Bouncy Boys cast. That's a Bouncy Boys. We're up. We're down. We're down. We're down further. We're staying down. And uh, I'm going to put mean, in look, an official guys, motion. Oh, please I'm sorry. Get out there and if you know, get get some other folks subscribed, rate and review. Uh, you know, on iTunes. You know, if you're enjoying our podcast, you know. That helps us. Uh, that helps us rank more highly. It helps us get you know bring in new listeners, build the community. That's that's what we're uh, looking to do. So we really really appreciate it. Every review counts. It means a lot. It takes a, just a few minutes of your day. And I think that'll do it for this edition of the Droids You're Looking For, a Star Wars podcast. What they throw? Double dog. Annie. <laughs> Targa. I guess like Togo's like the dog. Apparently, like Togo's like the real dog that they made the movie, the animated movie Balto. But like oh. Balto is like it's like all stolen valor. Like Balto didn't do anything. Togo oh. did everything. Well, Togo is what you do when you order seamless, <laughs> but you pick it up. 